Hi guys, it's Sandeep from Phone Arena and here we have with us the Sony Xperia Z5 smartphone. Now Z5 is the successor to Z3 Plus and the Z4 and it brings around quite a bit of changes as compared to the jump from the Z3 to the Z3 Plus. So let us take a look at the hardware aspect of things first before moving on to the software. So as you can see the device has a large 5.2 inch display which is full HD resolution above which you have the 5 megapixel camera, Sony branding ambient light as well as proximity sensors and the earpiece. Now below the display you have the loudspeaker, the secondary loudspeaker as the phone does support stereo loudspeakers which also houses the microphone, the secondary microphone inside that. Now moving over to the back you can see that the device has a 23 megapixel sensor compared to the 20.7 megapixel sensor of the Z3, Z3 Plus and the Z4. Now this sensor is 1 by 2.3 inch in size and it has a maximum aperture of f2.0. There's also an LED flash to go along with it. Now moving over to the right side of the device, the controls remain quite similar, but again, they have changed as well. So primarily you get the camera shutter button here, you get the volume rocker here. The volume rocker was previously located above the power slash lock key over here, but that has been moved down here. And now you have the power slash lock key, which also has a fingerprint sensor built into it. Now the fingerprint sensor is there on both the Z5 as well as the Z5 Premium handsets. We'll just take a look at that once we're doing the software aspect of things. Now moving over to the bottom, you have the micro USB port which is no longer covered like in the case of the Z3. The Z3 Plus and the Z4 did have the micro USB port at the bottom and were left uncovered. And yet the device is still waterproof. You have the lanyard eyelet here. Moving over to the left side, you still have the nano SIM slot, which is still protected by a flap, but that doesn't matter since you don't really open it up all that much and it can't break easily since you open it only once in a while. And apart from that, you also get a nice Xperia branding here, which is an embossed logo and it feels nice to hold. And moving over to the top, you have the 3.5mm audio jack here along with the secondary microphone. So that was a quick look at the hardware aspects of the device. So let's just take a look at the software aspects now. So we'll go into settings and check what software version the phone is running. So as you can see here, this is the model number E6653 and it's running on Android version 5.1.1. Now the device does have Sony UI on top, but it remains quite close to stock Android. As you can see here, everything's really smooth. There's not l much lag and it feels really good actually to use. It looks quite good, looks quite simple, quite neat. So let's just take a look at the storage as well. So this device actually has 32 GB of storage out of the box, unlike the Z3 and Z3 Plus, which came with 16 GB. It also has the micro SD card slot that helps you expand memory up to 200 GB. So out of 32 GB of space, the user gets 20.81 GB out of the box and the Android system takes around 9.43 GB. So let's go back. We'll just show you a new feature of the Z5, which is the fingerprint sensor. So all we need to do is go into security. So over here you have the fingerprint manager. So let's just go ahead and set up a fingerprint. We'll show you how the process works. Okay, so you just place your finger here multiple times over the power button. The power button still does click but you don't need to click it in order to actually get the fingerprint registered. You just need to tap on it, press it there. So that's it, one fingerprint has been registered. So let's just try and unlock the device now. So I'm going to lock the device here by pressing that. And let's see if it actually unlocks the device simply by placing my finger over it. No, so it doesn't do that. So you have to unlock the device and then that's it. It's as simple as that. So the device is unlocked now, and as you can see, it's asking for a password, and I can also use my fingerprint to unlock it. Let's just take a look at the camera UI now. So as you can see here, this is the camera UI. You have a quick link to the gallery here. You have the image capture button. You have the quick toggle switch between the photo and video modes. You have the different kind of modes, superior auto, manual, AR effect, 4K video, etc. And you have the white balance as well as HDR toggle here. You can adjust the white balance. You can also adjust the exposure compensation. You have the flash toggle here. You can also use it as a flashlight if you want. 
and you have the quick toggle between the front and rear cameras and you have the settings here where you can change the resolution currently it's set to 20 megapixel resolution at 16 is to 9 aspect ratio you can choose 23 megapixel but you get a 4 is to 3 aspect ratio and that is the maximum since this is a 23 megapixel sensor there is self timer smile shutter focus mode iso metering image stabilizer you also have geotagging you can choose whether to mute the camera or not when taking a photo you have a touch block in case you want to prevent accidental touches you can choose to have the grid lines on or off but i personally choose to have it in order to help me assist in composing the photo so that was a quick look at the camera ui the camera seems quite fast in terms of focusing like sony says images look really good in daylight at night time there is slight of noise but then that is there with every camera phone but the camera seems to be much better in terms of detail in terms of noise performance and in terms of color compared to the previous generation sony phones now since the device has a 5.2 inch full hd display and the resolution hasn't gone up we expect the battery life to be still pretty good same as the ones on the z3 plus and the z3 the phone is powered by a snapdragon 810 processor and the cooling is pretty good we never had any issues with overheating or any lag when using the device we assume that they're using version 2.1 from the oneplus similar to the oneplus and the phone also has 3 gb of ram and we didn't have any issues when you're we multitasking either so that was the hands-on with the sony xperia z5 smartphone if you like the video do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this thanks for watching